So the transcribed Bentham project was established in 2010 um, with an objective of having members of the public transcribe the unpublished works of Jeremy Bentham, which existed in upwards of 60,000 uh, manuscripts that were held in University College London and the British Library. So I was a research associate on the project and my specific role was to design the interface through which people would transcribe the digitized images of the manuscript. So in effect, that was building a, a platform that um, used TEI encoding um, alongside users' transcription of, of the manuscript. So what I needed to do was to, to create um, a tool that would allow users to, to easily input um, their, their transcriptions. I was working with the University of London Computing Centre and there was one person who was doing the, the heavy programming lifting on that. So my um, role was more um, designing um, how the transcriptions will be made and what role TEI and XML would play in it because I was very eager for that to to be included within the transcriptions. That wasn't a necessarily a, a decision that was made um, at the outset, but something that we um, thought, yeah, I mean, let's try to have users add TEI encoding to this. So, so all the participants had, had to sign up for, for an account and there was an option for adding um, all their details, adding an avatar, um, and there were discussion boards um, as well, which weren't as um, weren't used as much as we had anticipated. I think we had thought about people discussing um, discussing maybe words that are difficult to decipher or the various other aspects of, of the, the material, but that didn't happen as much as we had anticipated. So the volunteers were choosing an image and trying to transcribe it. And they didn't have to use any fancy way of doing that. There was a, a blank text box and you got an image with a zoom viewer and they could zoom in and try and type that in. But we did also supply a toolbar where they could put in tags around things like names, dates, abbreviations, strike through. And what they didn't necessarily know is that that was in TEI compliant XML. So they were actually marking up the document as they went. So in a later version what we did was we developed a WYSIWYG um, tool which uh, allowed users to, to see their transcription only but also to render um, particular parts of the manuscript like um, uh, like deletions or like um, additions uh, above the line. So I think this allowed users to, to have a more clean transcription environment um, and it allowed us to still preserve the, the XML tagging which was still you know, behind the, the main interface. The transcribers who came back again and again and again very quickly got used to the system and they were using the toolbar, um, which was nice. So we showed that textual encoding could be done if you provided a structured environment which helped folks to do it in a limited set of tools um, that actually people could use TI compliant XML to do manuscript transcription at a level of accuracy which was speeding up the whole project because we had a moderator so we've had a couple of moderators Tim Cosser and Louise Seward who both have PhDs in Bentham studies who were then checking the transcripts for accuracy and they could do about about 10 times more than they could have physically done just by reading them themselves so it did massively speed that up but the moderation was key for the quality control and also to make sure that the content made sense and also the formatting made sense. Now there was a further feedback loop where if a document wasn't quite completed it could be thrown back to the crowd and the crowd could then do that correction but we found that people really didn't like to correct other people's work. It, they were more interested in tackling a, a new page that had never been read before and then working with the moderator. The feedback the users would get wasn't 
kind of individually tailored, so we wouldn't tell them specifically, you know, what changes we had made. But because the um, interface was within a MediaWiki environment, they could go in and check any kind of revisions that had been made to the file. So the option was, was there to them, uh, available to them to, to do that. So at the time when we launched Transcribe Bentham, most of the other crowdsourcing platforms which were out there were doing very short, quick, distinct tasks, which were gamified with leaderboards and with rankings, and it was a way of encouraging people to contribute to fairly repetitive rote tasks over and over and over again. Transcribe Bentham, we built that into it but Transcribe Bentham is, is not a rote task. To transcribe a document takes volunteers two to three hours in most cases. It's not a quick press here, press there, press here, press there. It's not a, a, like a game mechanism. It is a, a bit of intellectual labor. And our volunteers didn't really care about the leaderboards. They were not there to compete against each other. So we downplayed that very quickly as part of the site. We initially we started giving people points for how many documents they read, and, and we still have that. There's somewhere on the site you can find that. But actually, it was not a motivation. They weren't particularly interested in that. The one thing that we have kept on the front page of the site is the benthemometer, which is how many of the manuscripts are now read. Last year we hit 50% of the collection. So if you think that the project, Bentham Project, with all their hard work, it took them 50 years to read about 10%, we've read, in another 10 years, we've read 50 more percent. So we'll need another eight years, we, or seven and a half years now, of Transcribe Bentham to keep going at this level to finish the whole collection. So it's a long-term project.